Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley, and I hope everybody had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. You know, I know uh, Michelle and I did, and we just made it back from um, our vacation in, in Mexico, where I really enjoyed myself other than getting attacked by a swarm of mosquitoes, and they just, they just ate my legs and body up and I'm out there weak I am still hurt you know so but I'm hoping that uh, you know, we got this great guest has been on our show I think it was on about three weeks ago a month ago mm -hmm. that uh, you know it's going to tell us about some of the things as relate to total health based on human nature and nature itself and uh, maybe he can give me a remedy to, to help ease the, the mosquito bite because I think they are hurt you know, so I want everybody to just, uh, you know, sit back and uh, uh, this great guest of ours is going to educate and educate us. And we're going to talk about his product, which I went and I'm trying his product called Udo Oil 369 Blend. And it's uh, uh, omega fatty acid and a lot of other great things. He's going to talk about that again as well. But uh, before we do anything, I have to always... Uh, you know, I always turn to my exec producer, co-host, and the the person that makes our show wonderful as it is. And that would be on no other than Dr. Michelle Denise Cooley. How are you doing today, Doc? I'm doing fine, James. How are you? I'm itching. <laughs> well, I got the remedy for that. Wear long <laughs> pants. <laughs> No more shorts for you. Uh, <laughs> Here, I solved your problem. <laughs> well, I think the problem is a little deeper than that, but that's okay. But this, that's that's part of human nature. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about uh, today. Uh, and, and, uh, and wherever you are watching this show at, whether you're watching on the E360 TV, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, over 25 other live streaming platforms, if you want to be part of the conversation, all you have to do is just go to the comments, ask this great guest who Michelle is getting ready to introduce you to shortly. Any questions that you want, he's a genius and he's going to get you an answer, especially when it comes to total health and human nature and a lot of other things. So, Michelle, without any further ado, can you please tell our viewers and our listeners the title of the show, purpose of the show, and also introduce this great guest? Yes. Well, the title of the show, again, you said total health based on health and human nature. And we're getting to know Udo Erasmus, the health and wellness expert, author and co-founder of Udo's Choice Supplement Band. And Udo's pioneer work in health and wellness started over 40 years ago as a prominent voice of the healthy fats oil movement. Udo raised manufacturing standards of food oils, including flax oil. In 1994, he co-founded the Udo's Choice Supplement brand, a global leader in cutting-edge health products specializing in healthy oils, probiotics, digestive enzymes, and greens. Udo is an accomplished author of several books, including Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, with 250,000 plus copies sold, with an extensive education in biochemistry and biology, and a master's degree in counseling psychology. He has impacted millions of lives by delivering his fresh message on how to achieve perfect health. The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life, welcomes back to the show, Mr. Udo Erasmus. Hi. Hi. Glad to be on. Okay, so I'm going to talk, I was going to talk about how to end war in the world, and all you want to <laughs> deal with is mosquito itches. <laughs> well, now, you know, I'll tell you, man, that's that's a... That's the biggest problem that I have right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you're lucky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Udo, you, you was on the show a, a month ago, and uh, it was yeah. an absolutely fantastic uh, discussion yeah. that we had. And uh, I know we're going to talk about a lot more things as, as relate to total health. Yeah. You know, based on nature and based on a lot of things that you've been doing. Yeah. Over the last 20, 30 years. Uh, first of all, can you remind our, our listeners and our viewers who you are, uh, where you grew up at, and what yeah. led you to being the great, uh, I, I call it scientist and developer, or, or, or all of these other great adjectives that I can put in now, but because it's yeah. all true. Yeah, well, I started, I started, you know, I got, I, well, I was born during the Second World War. 
in Europe. And we basically, my family lost their home, they lost their farm, they lost their all of their possessions. They basically, the war destroyed the culture. And we were refugees fleeing out of Poland uh, in at the end of the war with the communists chasing us and the allies shooting at us from planes. So we're in like in the crossfire between those two. And then my mother went, started going through the fields in winter with two kids in tow. She had to leave four kids behind. We ended up in an orphanage. Uh, I mean, it was a real mess. My, so my life really started with, here's how bad it can get, you know? And because it started there, I was always thinking, man, there must be a way that life can be better than this. So I'm addicted to trying to find way to improve quality of life. And that can happen on many levels. And I, I got into, aside from learning science and then biosciences and then psychology and then a year of medicine and then biochemistry and genetics, I was also interested in everything going on socially. And uh, the biggest thing for me was always, there must be a way that we can live in harmony and I'm going to find out how. So that, that, that's been my driver all my life. And when I started working in health, I started with oils because that's the dif most difficult area and oils cause the most problems when they're damaged because they're very, very sensitive. And so I did that and then I got into an, uh, digestion, which is the second most neglected area. So we talk with enzymes, probiotics, fiber and bitters. And then I got into greens because greens are the foundation of everything on the planet. So, you know, so the cow that, you know, the cow that you eat is made out of grass, right? So that steak that you, you think is so cool is actually what the cow made out of grass. There's enough protein in grass to make the steak that, the, <laughs> that is the cow, right? And uh, so then I got into greens and then I started saying, well, what else affects health? And the answer is actually everything affects health. So then how do you break it down? And I figured it out. I figured out, let's break it down in terms of human nature, because human nature is more than just food and fitness. Human nature has a lot to it. And the environment, the surroundings. And so I started by saying, OK, let's start from the core of the human being. What is the core of the human being? If you go deep enough, so if you can get out of your head, and you can get out of the distractions that of everything moving in the physical world. And you sit really still and you bring your focus deep inside into the core of your being. What would you find there? You would find your foundation. And your foundation is called, inter, I call it internal awareness. And that foundation is, is unconditional peace. So peace is everybody's foundation. So peace is the foundation of your existence. And peace is also the foundation of the existence of the universe. And when people are scientific, they call it the field. And we when people are religious, they call it God. Internal awareness. And wow. in, in, that, in that place is a peace that can, is not affected by anything that ever goes on. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example. In space, you know, space is kind of like there's nothing in it, like it has no content, and it's everywhere. Right? Is that true? Space? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So, in space. Now, you can have an explosion go on in space. But is space affected by the explosion? No. Completely unaffected. Is that true? It's, uh, I think you own something, you know, but um, you, you mentioned a couple of things uh, as as relate to, and I, I call it the mind, body, and soul. Yeah. Uh, because it's just uh, the body, the mind, everything is made up. And and you spoke about the, like the food we eat, uh, the cows yeah. eat the grass and grass and the steak yeah. and all. All of that is true. But many people don't think about it that way because they won't let their mind focus on the things uh, from a physical perspective at least right that, right. that they need to uh, be able to control themselves you right know, so 
I want to talk a whole lot more about this because uh, you, yeah. you came up with a topic. I mean, you talked prior to us getting on the air about total health. Yeah. You know, based on human nature, based on all of these different things. And uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, I want to dive off into all of those things. And yeah. and I, mean, I didn't mean to cut you off about health. No, by, no, it's, by, a, it's good. What, but what you said is makes sense. Like there are a lot of people who don't pay attention to what's in the core of their being because they're always looking in what's going on in the world and they're dealing with all of this moving parts and they're dealing with all of their thoughts in their head and then maybe they're dealing with their body but they never look into but and then they're looking for peace in all of that and you're looking they're looking for peace in the change and you don't get peace in the change so you have to look to where the peace actually is if you want to feel content or you want to feel whole, you have to go deeper than your physical body. You have to go into the energy that keeps you alive. You have to go even deeper than that, which is into the awareness where your peace, whose nature is peace. And it's not peace, it's not the absence of war. Peace is a presence of a feeling within you that is based in pure awareness. So what that means is every day, every if you want you want to have more peace in your life, you need to sit down and in stillness, you need to learn how to sit still and just get present in the space that your body occupies because that's where the peace is. And it's always there. When you bring your awareness, you bring your focus inside to the core of your being, always you will find peace there. No matter what's going on outside, in the middle of the war, there's peace in the core of your being. In the middle of all the craziness, in the middle of all your distractions, in the middle of your overwhelm, in the middle of your anxiety, your PTSD, in the middle of your being, when you have those conditions, there is an indestructible peace, an all-encompassing peace that is also present within you. So if you shift your focus to that, you're not anxious anymore because you're, you're going to experience peace. Right. You're not going to experience PTSD, but you have to learn how to bring your focus there. And that takes some practice and you have to be willing to to do the practice. OK, so that's the first. The second is the energy that keeps you alive is solar energy. Everything that's alive on this planet, almost everything. It's solar energy that provides the energy, makes the trees grow. Like if you burn a log that's stored sunlight energy you know if you if you burn your gasoline in your car fossil fuels that's stored solar energy from millions of years ago that we're digging out and now we're now we're burning it right but your life right now is also solar energy filtered through 93 million miles filtered through earth's atmosphere filtered through plants and the plants collect some of that energy put it in store it in bonds and molecules you eat those as food in your cells that the, those bonds are broken and the energy is released and now you call it life. So life is solar energy and you are a solar energy gadget. I want to okay? hold that thought. Right there. Let's hold that thought because we yeah. got to take a station break. But yeah. I want to get you back and really delve off into that because you are really, really on to something. That our audience uh, need to understand. So if you want to be part of this conversation, all you have to do is just go to the uh, the platform that you're watching on. Ask this great man any question that you like, because we're going to come back and we're really going to get off into it. We're going to understand peace, mind, harmony, and how to go about taking care of yourself. It's your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley. We'll be back shortly after the break. I Come on.
Life is a series of circles and cycles, phrases and stages. These experiences teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to It's Your Life with James Cooley. James is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the J.C. Cooley Foundation. James is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity. It's time to get you equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, James Cooley. It's your Welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. And uh, wow, you know, that uh, uh, toward the end of that last segment, I almost forgot about taking the break <laughs> uh, because uh, Udo was just, just you know, breaking it down. You're going into the mind, body, and soul, the foods, uh, everything that caused uh, us to be aware. Sometimes we have to sit still, take it all in, open up our mind, and just grasp the understanding of what it's going to require for us to have a healthy life, a prosperous life, a healthy mind, a prosperous mind, a healthy mind, body, and soul. And if you want to be part of this, you got some questions you want to jump in in this conversation, uh, we welcome you uh, to join in. But I want to pick it back up yep. uh, from the way we left off. We had to take the break. Yep. Yep. And you were talking about the uh the food. solar so, solar energy yes yeah happy anniversary by the way hey thank you that, thank you uh, that's, that's really cool yeah so okay so <clears throat> so so we're talking about solar energy is life energy and life energy is actually your you know you think you're the body Right. We 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 live like we were the body. You know, we do everything for the body. We sleep for the body. We eat for the body. We go to the bathroom for the body. We work to make money to buy the things for the body. And so the body is our project. But we're actually not the body, because if I point and you say, hey, JC, whose body is that? You would probably say, oh, well, that's my body. And when you say that's my body, you've just told me that you are not the body. You're the owner of the body. And your body is your property. So you are actually the owner of the body. So who owns your body? Well, life owns your body. And life runs your body 24-7, 365, lifelong, never takes time off, never goes on strike, never asks for a raise, never gets mad at you and then decides not to take care of you. And so life is unconditional love for your body. So if you are looking for love, once again, sit still, bring your focus inside into the energy that it fills the space that your body occupies. And that energy is unconditional love for your body. And that energy cannot be hurt, never dies, is formless, is indestructible, and is perfect health so when you have you're talking about itches on your you know actually you don't have mosquito bite itches your body has mosquito bite itches and you are perfectly healthy because you are life and life does <laughs> life is not subject to mosquito bites right so that's the second thing so so we've talked about peace and now we're talking about unconditional love Every human being is unconditionally loved by the life that runs their body. So if you're looking for love on the outside, you'll get some, you'll find some, but it's not unconditional. But inside of you, you're so taken care of. You would, you know, if when you feel it, it's like, oh, my God, I can't. Uh, oh, my God, I am completely taken care of. I never have to worry about it. Even when body and life part company, I will go with life and I go on. Only the body goes back into the water, the food and the or the the, the soil and the, and the air that it was made from. Well, it'll disintegrate and go back to all of that. But you're still alive because you were never the body. The body is not life. The body is alive. You know, when the body is with life, which is what alive means. 
right? Then, then mosquito bites are possible. When the body is without life, then, then you know, you won't feel any itch. Life doesn't feel an itch, right? <laughs> like, you, you know, so uh, uh, interesting what, what you're talking about because yeah, um, it's uh, we, we look at life as uh, the way that you explaining it as a the solo system, which is uh, I don't know what people call the atmosphere or they call right. it whatever that is light light, uh, but <laughs> uh, but we still have to explain to our viewers uh, that. Um, each one of these mechanisms, I'm talking about even the physical side, uh, just like you just explained to me, the physical side is what you feel that hurt or whatever that might be. Right. Yeah, and and uh, I believe that once we are understand the differential of each, I, ca I call it mind, body, and soul, mm -hmm. uh, which makes the light, uh, which uh, that's my interpretation of it. But we still have to understand the physical side. Yeah. That's what oh. we think. That yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. We're not quite there yet. Okay. So that's so that's the second second thing is unconditional love called life. Okay. And the third thing is called I call it um, inspired purpose, and that's the shine of life into the world, and that's where your your inspiration comes from. Your creativity comes from how you can help people comes from and it's always it's the bridge between life and the world and it's what you manifest into the world and if you if you're feeling the peace and the love that are your essence then you're going to manifest that into the world if you're not feeling it you can't manifest it okay so that's the and i call that the that's the positive part of mind that's number three. Number four is the physical body. And now we're talking about food and fitness, and we're talking about mosquito bites, and we're talking about um, uh, uh, rest and recovery, and we're talking about detox. So, And that gets a lot of attention. Everybody's talking about that. Then the fifth part, I call that survival smarts or survival mind or protective mind. And that's the skills you have to to protect people protect yourself and protect other people and the courage you you do to face danger and that courage is embedded in in life and peace that's where the courage comes from okay so that's the fifth so that's human nature but then you outside of that you have your social group that affects health and outside of that, you have the natural environment that affects health. And outside of that, you have the big picture, which I call infinite awareness, which is back to the same as internal awareness, only the expansion of it. And all of those affect health. And the and the big picture, the big picture, you know, people again, people call that God, you know, so like God is in you and you are in God. If, if you take the, the religious language and the physicists call it the field and they're you know they they're trying to figure out what is the nature of reality that is the nature of reality every one of those eight pieces or then there's emotions and emotions are a composite of all eight parts because your emotions are affected by everything else right and you have positive emotions that basically say okay hey i'm doing pretty good and life is going in the direction I want it to go. And you have negative emotions, which you uh, come up with when something blocks your pro forward progress. And then you bring up an emotion. Emotion gives you energy. And then you try to break through the obstacles. So that's the, that's the picture. Every one of those has a different nature, has a different function, needs a different kind of attention on a regular basis, goes off in a different way and responds to a different kind of intervention. So if you want to live a whole life, you have to give each one of those eight parts its due. That's, that's the model. When you're fully present in all of your being and your surroundings, and you're not lost in your head, just tripping on things, 
that's when you have the best possible life that you could have. And the goal, the goal, subconsciously or consciously, the goal is how can I be fully present in all of my being and really experience this incredible gift that I've been given that I only get for 70 years or 100 years. You know, before that, I didn't exist for billions of years. And after that, I won't exist for billions of years. And here I am right now. And this has got to be incredible because this is the holiday. You know, this is the short holiday between non-existence. I have this holiday as a human being. What do I need to do to make the most of it? And what to make the most of it is to appreciate the gift fully by being fully present in it. And that's purpose wow. one. That's purpose one for human beings. And purpose two is when I feel whole and I feel cared for and I feel rich and I feel happy, there's only one thing left to do, which is to help where I can. So that's it. When number one purpose is be fully present and enjoy the gift you were given because nobody else can enjoy it for you. And if you don't enjoy that gift, it's a wasted gift. And number two, once you're in that place, how can I help make life better on this planet in the time that I have with, the, with whatever talents I have? What I would like to do is uh, go back and, you know, touch on uh, all of the, the eight things that you talked about in, in three in a, in a little bit more detail. So our, our audience can try to unpack all of these things. Uh, yeah. First of all, uh, the eight uh, different philosophies that you talked about. Uh, yeah. did, did you create those or you, you, you got those from someone else? No, I didn't. Cr I neither created them or got them from someone else. I'm just looking at how life is. Okay. <clears throat> how, you know, how, how do you find out, you know, how do you find out something in science? Well, you look at it, you pay attention, you make an observation. And I've been, you know, I, because I was, I was by myself quite, a, quite a bit. I paid attention to what's going on right here, mm -hmm. right? You bring the focus here, wherever you put your focus, you start to learn something. So if you put your focus on water, you'll learn something about water. If you put your focus on mosquito bites, you'll learn something about mosquito bites, right? One of them is that when it scratches, when you scratch them, it, it, it helps a little bit, but it doesn't go away, right? <laughs> right? So scratching doesn't, you know, that's, so it's, that's not the total scratching a mosquito bite is not the total cure for mosquito bites. Right. So wherever you focus, you know, when I focus on, when I focus on how oils work, then I learn about how oils work. When I focus on the woman I'm with, then I get to know the woman, right. To some extent, at least. Right. So <laughs> it's always, it's always about observation where we learn is from observation. So in order to learn about this, and by the way, what I'm talking about to some extent is also what all the masters talked about, Buddha and Jesus and Krishna and all of those guys. What did they, where did they get the, the, the knowledge that they, that they brought to expression? Well, they all spent time sitting quietly by themselves, with themselves, within themselves, seeing the light inside, hearing the sound inside, feeling the love inside, feeling, tasting the sweetness of life inside as real experiences. And they then said, hey, by the way, what I'm talking about is also in you. Are you interested in that? Because if you are, then I can help you become closer to that and have your own experience of the thing that inspires you when you listen to me. Because they, you know, it's it's not like the masters had something and and everybody else doesn't have it. No, it's just the masters learned how to sit still. I want you to hold that thought because we got to take a station break. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is a very interesting conversation. And when we come back, we got a couple of questions. Uh, I think uh, Stacy got a couple of questions for you, and uh, hopefully mm -hmm. uh, we have other. Our viewers out there will have a, a couple of questions as well. It's your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley. We'll be back shortly after the break with more Udo. It's your life.
Noah Dingley here, producer of The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And the new audio version of James' book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, is a must-have. James shares his true life story of struggle and success in America. It's both a cautionary tale and a roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audio books are sold. Welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. And wow. And I'm sitting back just enjoying this lesson, uh, this uh, another man's uh, thoughts and ideals, now, which makes all the sense in the world because we all have vision. We all have understanding. We all have thoughts and we all have our own way of being able to distinguish uh, what we believe to be our purpose and how to absorb and relax and understand uh, all of these things, especially when it comes to total health based on nature, based on science, based on um, the things that we have experienced in the past. And that's what Udo is talking about. And uh, it's uh, absolutely tremendous uh, on how he is laying it out. You know, so if you want to be part of the conversation, all you do is go to the comments, ask any questions that you like, and I promise uh, we'll get you an answer. Udo, now Stacy uh, asked you a question because part of your eight uh, things that you talked about mm -hmm. was unconditional love. Love, and mm -hmm. she asked the question, "How do I know I am un unconditionally loving myself?" Okay, so yeah, this is an interesting question because there's confusion in it. Uh, unconditionally loving myself. I wasn't talking about that. I was saying your body is unconditionally loved by life. And now the question is, are you the body or are you life? Because if you're the body, you're the recipient of that love. And if you're the body, you are that love. Uh, if you're sorry, if you're life, you are that love, right? <clears throat> And if you are life, to, to be life instead of being the body, you have to bring your awareness inside into the energy that is that solar energy, that is that love. And you feel it. You feel love. You feel care. You feel taken care of. When you feel it, you are that love. Your individual essence is actually unconditional love. Now that we don't get told that. We get told, oh, you're the body and your name is Udo and your name is JC and your name is Stacy. We get told that, but that's the name for the body. That's the little sticker label they put on us so they could keep us apart or so they could yell at us and, and uh, make sure that the yelling was associated with the person they were yelling at. So that's a convenience that we created. That's not... And life doesn't get into trouble. Unconditional love. If you live in that unconditional love, you don't need any other laws. And if you don't live in that un unconditional love, then all the laws that Moses made and all the governments make, they don't work because you, you'll break them whenever, whenever it suits you, whenever it suits whatever your goal is. 
So <clears throat> the masters were really smart. They said, love, if you, you know, they said there's one, love God, love self, love your neighbor as yourself. Love is the only thing that makes sense. And they didn't make any other laws. Oh my God, can you live with just that one law? Yeah, you can. Why? Because when I feel loved and I feel taken care of, I'm not mad at you. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't have to somehow feel like you're competing with me and taking something away from me because I am completely taken care of from inside and nobody else can, nobody can take that away from me. Right. And then all of a sudden racism disappears and sexism disappears. And then all of the stuff we fight about disappears because why would I fight with anything on the outside, which is uncomfortable and, and, and doesn't feel good. Why would I fight with something when I have the choice to feel completely whole, completely loved, completely taken care of, right? And that's how powerful that unconditional love that we are is. So how you know it only by your own experience and how you know it by your own experience, you sit still and you take time and you let your focus drift inside and you feel it and you see it and you hear it. And you say, wow, this is incredible. Oh my God. Oh my God. I had no idea it could be this good. And then your life is simple. You know, you know, like if you if you if you're missing something and you think you need something, you know, food, water, air for the body, but for the heart, you know, the for the for the mind, for the soul, oh, you already got it. It's already there. It's always been there. It's been running the show. It weighs nothing. It's been running the show the whole time. From the time you were conceived till the time you, your body checks out. Life is unconditionally loving and running the entire show. Every molecule that reacts with every other molecule, life is making that happen. Every, and you know how many molecules there are? There's 60 trillion cells and each cell has 60 trillion molecules in it. And there's every second, there's a hundred thousand chemical reactions in every cell, you know, and you're not making that happen with your mind, you know, and your government is not making that happening with its laws. Life is making all of that happening free of charge inside of you, <laughs> you know, for, for like decades, right? So, <clears throat> and then you start to think about that. Oh my God, you know, when I'm sleeping, my heart continues to beat. Well, who's doing that? Oh, yeah, life's doing that. Wow, thank you. <laughs> you know, imagine you had to stay awake when you fell asleep just to make sure that your heart was beating. <laughs> that wouldn't work, right? Oh, my God, you know, my kidneys work while I'm sleeping. Oh, my God, you know, my, my food is getting processed. And oh, all the molecule of vitamin C and the molecule of omega-3s and the molecule of magnesium that needs is needed by a cell somewhere in my ankle. It's getting, how's it getting there? Well, I'm not doing that. Life is doing that. And life is unbelievably competent to take care of all of the needs of the body. And the little part we play is we just make sure we put good food in there so that life gets, the, gets what it needs to make that body. Because if we don't take responsibility here for doing it right, then we're not giving life what it needs to do the job. And then we start to have sympathy. By the way, I saw on your on your ad, you were eating a pineapple. If you had cut the pineapple and you had rubbed that on your skin where the mosquito bites were, the mosquito bites would have probably been taken down and you wouldn't have them. <laughs> I, I, I believe it would be more mosquitoes would have came my way. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, then, then, you, then you need more pineapple. So... <laughs> But next time you go to uh, next time you go to Mexico and into that territory, aside from wearing long pants, which Michelle suggested, which is really a good idea, <laughs> but if you're not going to follow her good advice, then uh, keep keep raw pineapple slices handy and just and just uh, rub them on your skin. I, I will certainly keep that in mind. I want to go back a little bit because um, yeah, I, I noticed that uh, everything that you're saying is is all about the mental and the spiritual. Yeah. Uh, well, but uh, in one's mind, it's, it requires what, what I call uh, your emotions, your intellect, 
in your will. Mm -hmm. And no one person is just going to sit back and just focus on all of the good that the, the, the light and the air and all of that brings. Why not? Because it's an education from a human perspective, because that's still a human uh, side of that, of that all of these things don't always make sense to us. Uh, because I, I believe our mind would not allow us to just focus on the there. Uh, it's going to it have to be an interaction at all time between all three. And or I'm talking about from, from the body perspective, in my opinion, yeah. mm -hmm. because uh, you mentioned that um, you if you had everything or felt that you had everything you don't need this you don't need that you can't be angry i mean nothing else matter yet but you still have to figure out what kind of, i gotta eat something i gotta yeah, make yeah. sure I the right yeah. I, I gotta do this i i mean so i i was a little confused when mm -hmm. it came to how you interject your emotions your intellect and your will to be able to focus on uh the the nature of uh, I, yeah, love that's which, it's, it's good. I'm glad you asked because uh, it, it's an important part of it. So, do you know what heartache is? Yes, we all have had it. <laughs> you feel it, right? You feel it in your chest, right? Yes. And something yes. triggers it. Maybe maybe you had a fight with the woman or mm -hmm. maybe somebody dumped you or maybe somebody promised you something and they didn't keep their promise or somebody who you loved died or your dog ran away. And you all, there's so many different triggers for it, and you feel it here in your chest. Mm -hmm. That feeling on your chest is not caused by what triggers it. Okay. Right? So, so my woman dumps me. I feel heartache. I think it's the woman that's the cause of my heartache. But she's not the, thought of, she's not the cause of my heartache. The trigger is not the cause. You know what the cause of heartache is? What's that? Our disconnection from ourselves, our disconnection from the the life, from the 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 awareness, from the inspiration. That's what causes heartaches. And how does that happen? When you were in your mother's womb, I call it the Buddha tank because it's kind of like it sounds nice. You know, you're in your mother's womb. You had no language. You don't. You didn't have a skin color that you knew. You didn't have any information. You weren't doing any thinking. You didn't know who your mother was. You were just floating in a little tank. You know, the food was coming in and building your body. Life was building your body with food that your mother ate. And in that place, there was no place to go and nothing to do. And everything was taken care of. It was pretty safe. So where was your focus? At that time well because there was no place for it to go on the outside your focus of awareness was at rest inside in its source in life and in awareness and you spent nine months if you're a, a normal term nine you know normal term baby you spent nine months in deep meditation on what i'm talking about in terms of awareness, in terms of uh, life, and in terms of inspiration. You didn't have words for it. You couldn't have explained it. You didn't know there was an outside world. And so you were just in this little bliss place. You know, one with God, you could say. You know, like the, like the masters, like a yogi, like a, a, someone in deep prayer. You were just in this quiet place on the inside. And then you came out and you had to get to know the world and your senses took you, your focus out into the world. And in that process, you disconnected from that inside connection. And that's where heartache began. Wow. And heartache, oh, and, heartache, and heartache is the call to come back home inside to where our wholeness and where our love and where all those things we want in our life already exist as feelings. Hold it though. Hold that yep. thought about feelings because we got to take yep. a station break and we're going to come back. And oh, this is so interesting. I wish we had two hours. <laughs> you know, so uh, we'll be back shortly after break with more. Uh,
Hello, hey, I'm James Cooley. I am the founder and CEO of the J.C. Cooley Foundation, Options Opportunities Last and Choice Program. Our primary mission is to help build the foundation of our youth and young adults and communities. And we encourage everyone to dream big, think big, and be big at everything you do. And the way that you do that is, first of all, you gotta believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You have to know that you are here for a purpose. You also, have to be able to step out your comfort zone and do things that you that you probably didn't think that you can do. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life, and I uh, tell you, my absolutely wonderful guest is teaching us a lesson on life, a lesson on everything, a lesson on self a lesson on meditation, a lesson on being still and just soak all the goodness and greatness in and also uh, teaching us how we can just be totally, you know, attain total health based on nature, based on the things God placed here for us, based on the light and based on understanding. And we got the better part of six minutes, but, you know, I want to get some more as much as this as I can get. And so, Udo, I'm turning it back over to you because it's fascinating, yep. my friend. All right. So, okay. So one of the things that is worth pointing out in, in the world, we always get told work hard, right? Every push, 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 get shit done. I mean, sorry, <laughs> get stuff done. Always get stuff done. Do, 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 do. Right. And then we say, okay, but play hard too. Play, play, play hard, 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 hard. Well, if you work hard and play hard and you don't do anything else, you're going to burn out because you're always under pressure. Always oh, perform, 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 perform. Where do you get the rest? Where do you get? So if you're going to work hard and you're going to play hard, you should also do nothing hard. And that's where the stillness comes in. In, when you go into stillness and you're awake, do you know that you get more rest than when you're sleeping? Because when you're sleeping, your mind still wanders. When you sit still, deliberately sit still, you're actually getting more rest than you get from, from sleeping. And so when I, and, and a lot of people haven't heard about this do nothing hard, you know, or sit still or, discover the magnificence of your existence. But it's not a new topic because, because all of the spiritual people talked about it. You know, even then one of them is be still and know that I am God. You know, that came from somebody sitting still and recognizing something. Right? So, so what I'm addressing, by the way, when you don't feel rested and you don't feel peace and you don't feel like you're being loved, then you can get irritated really easily. You can get triggered really easily. 
and that's why people kill each other and that's why people cheat each other and that's why people insult each other why would you know why is that because we're not doing our homework we individually are not doing our homework to be in peace and to feel content and to feel cared for and then we take it out on other people how fair how is that fair right so a lot of people haven't heard how important it is to take time to be with yourself to be alone and to discover the awesomeness and magnificence of the existence that you have been given as a gift for a short time. That is so interesting. That is so interesting. Udo, we're down to the last couple of minutes of the show. But yeah. Can you give our, our viewers and our listeners uh, two minutes or less uh, some takeaways that uh, Take they away. might takeaways that they want from this great discussion that, we, that you and yeah. I just had. Yeah, well, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, all I say is like whatever. Okay, I'd say one more thing. <clears throat> Every childhood has trauma in it. You know, you fall down, you skin your knee, trauma. You know, your parents yell at you for something you didn't do, trauma, right? What You know, you, 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 you see violence, trauma. You know, so every child that has trauma and none of us are responsible for the trauma. You know, the trauma is not our fault, but every one of us is responsible for the healing. And you can, you know, with trauma, people do two things. Either they become victims and then they try to get handouts and they try to get sympathy and they try to get stuff for nothing. Or they use trauma as a way to learn to process, to heal, and to learn compassion, <clears throat> right? So, <clears throat> but what is interesting is no matter what the trauma has been, I mean, everything, rape or whatever the trauma has been, something in you was not affected by whatever the trauma was. And that is within you all the time. And if you can focus on the trauma when, you, when you're working through it, but also focus on the peace that was never traumatized and focus on the love that was never traumatized and focus on the shine that was never traumatized. Then you begin to be able to have balance in your life. And whatever bad thing happened to you did not affect the essence of your being. That's why healing is possible because you're already whole inside. And it's yeah. just learning to, to, to shift your focus and good at shifting your focus. Sometimes you have to look at the trauma, but you should also look at the peace that you are and the love that you are and how incredible you, it is that you're alive. Uh, Udo, Udo, I'd like to thank you so much, but I want yep. you to tell our audience how they can get in touch with you. Also <clears throat> get your product. I, I use it. I mean, I'm yep. still in the research portion, but it seemed to be yep. working pretty good. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you tell them how to contact you, how they can get your product, what the name of your product? And Yeah, yeah, yeah the, and pro the products you can find on udoschoice.com, U-D-O-S-choice.com. Or you can go into the refrigerator section in the supplement section in the health food stores, and it's in the refrigerator. And uh, the enzymes are on the shelf. The probiotics are in the refrigerator as well. Uh, and uh, and then this kind of stuff, I'm, I have a website that's called The Udo, T-H-E-U-D-O. And you can listen to the podcasts that I've done and, and you can uh, get more information. We have a couple of courses we do that have to do with mental health. And, and uh, but, you know, again, like when you have mental illness, something in you is, is beyond mental illness and is completely whole. Even there, you know, when you're overwhelmed, something in you is completely calm. You know, when when Europe got peace to PTSD, something in you is completely calm, not affected, was never affected, can never be affected by any of the things in the ch world of change that traumatize us. Hey, Udo, and, I want to yeah. just thank you so much. Thank yeah, yeah. You so much so, for being on the show. I'd like to thank uh, my executive producer and co-host for always putting together uh, great shows. Most importantly, I'd like to thank our uh, listening audience and viewers for always tuning in to the James Coley Show. I want everybody to always dream big, think big, be big at everything you do. We'll see you next week, all week long, same time, same place. It's your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Coley.